Hi, welcome to Resin Chem Tech. Today I'm going to cover how to make low cost, easy, simple, motion controlled LED stair lighting without making any modifications to your existing staircase. So stay tuned. There are a lot of videos online on YouTube and other places of people who've built uh, these stair LED stair lighting systems. And some of them are really fancy with uh, light strips running horizontally across each tread that lights up as you step on it to embedded LED lights in the stringers. But most of those require substantial modifications to the staircase itself. And if you followed any of my other videos or blog articles, you know one of my cardinal rules is to not do anything that requires substantial modification uh, to the infrastructure because at some point we're going to retire, uh, sell this house, and all this stuff needs to come out. This particular installation, I could have this entire thing removed in about 30 minutes and you'd have no idea it was ever there. So my goal here was to create the same kind of effect of LED stair lighting uh, using motion detectors and WLED software um, without modifying the existing staircase. So you can see here, uh, I've got motion sensors at the top and the bottom. It's able to detect which direction by which motion sensor fires first. Uh, they turn the lights off when the other motion detector is triggered. If in this last case you saw where I triggered them from the bottom but didn't continue up the stairs, eventually these lights will turn themselves off after about 15 seconds. Now all of that part of it is handled through Home Assistant and Home Assistant Automation. We'll talk about that a little bit at the end. One of the nice things here about using WLED software, which we used, is even though you see me using the chase uh, or the wipe scene, you're not limited to just those white lights uh, running up and down. You've got the full plethora of WLED colors and effects. So again, you're seeing some examples here of using multiple colors. Um, you can use multiple effects. And again, you, through Home Assistant, you have the ability to turn that motion detection off and on and control these lights manually. So again, you can, can turn these lights on either through automation or through Home Assistant and again set multiple various effects. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to take a look quickly at the parts that we used to build this and more importantly how we mounted these to the staircase so that it doesn't require any modifications to your existing staircase and they can easily be removed or replaced at a different time. So here are the primary parts we're going to be using to build our LED stair lighting. First off, we'll be using three Wemos D1 Minis. And you can use any ESP8266 uh, board that you like, but I like the Wemos D1 Minis because of their small size. Two of these will be used for the motion detectors at the top and the bottom of the stairs. We'll have a simple PIR motion detector that we will hook up to the five volt ground and a signal out which will hook up to uh, pin D6. We will throw these in a small 3D enclosure and we'll be able to mount those at the top and the bottom of the stairs. The other D1 Mini will be our WLED controller. And for that, we will need a logic level shifter. For that reason, we're gonna use a small prototype board to mount those onto. I'm not going to cover that here. I have another video and a blog post on how to build your own WLED controller. So I'll include a, a link down in the video description, more details on, on how to build that. But we will be putting that in this small enclosure that we can mount either at the top or at the bottom of the stairs, depending on where our power supply is. And of course, we'll meet, need WS2812B LED strips. So speaking of the power supply, you also need a, in my case, I'm using, you'll need a five volt. I'm using a 40 amp power supply. Um, the size of the power supply you need will be somewhat dependent on the number of lights, but I like to have a little additional power. Uh, the motion detectors will not be powered off of that power supply. Instead, we're going to use a flat cable uh, USB power supply to, to power those, and I'll show you why I used flat when we take a look at the, at the actual mounting of the stairs. Uh, but I'm able to hide this underneath the 
the rail uh, and keep it out of the way. A couple of other things, uh, I do like to use these um, JST connectors for my LED strips. You can use spade connectors or you can wire everything direct. Uh, but I do like to have the ability to unplug things and, and take them apart should I need to replace a particular component. Now I mentioned in the opening that we weren't going to do any modifications to the existing staircase. And the key to that are these. They are aluminum channels specifically built for LED lights. So what we will do is we will mount our LED strips in here and we mount those to the existing stair risers with these mounting clips and these very, very small screws. So the only modification you're going to have to your staircase whatsoever are, in my case, it's about eight per side, so about 16 of these small screw holes. So that's the only, only thing we're going to do to the existing staircase to be able to mount these. Now I will say that these aluminum channels are great and they do come with a diffuser over the top, so the diffuser simply snaps on here to the, to the top of the LED channel. But um, if you mess with WS2812, you'll know that they have a peel-off backing on here and have an adhesive strip. So theoretically, you, you take these things and just mount these directly to your, your uh, stairs without using the aluminum channel. But my experience is that this adhesive on the back is, is just not that strong. And these lights will generate a little bit of heat, um, especially if you run them on full brightness white. And I've just found that, th that this adhesive just doesn't hold up over time. And eventually you're, they're going to sag and they're going to come loose. So the one other thing I like to do is I like to take a little bit of this 3M uh, double-sided tape. Uh, it's a perfect size. And then I simply mount that inside of my channel. Then I peel off this and peel off the backing on the strip, stick those in there, and my experience so far for over a couple of years, I've never had anything come loose. So that's the technique we're going to use, and I think that's all the pieces and parts that I wanted to talk about. So next up, we'll take a look at how this is actually installed on the stairs itself. So here we're going to take a look at how we actually mounted those aluminum channels to our stair stringers in this particular case. As I mentioned, try to keep my shadow out of the way of the lights here. We basically mount these small little clips and I'd say I, I mounted them about every, oh I don't know, 16, 18 inches. Um, my staircase from top to bottom is about 12 and a half feet. I would say that my rail runs about a little over 11 and a half feet because we don't go quite all the way to the bottom down here. There's a little bit of space there for the wiring. But we simply mount those clips. And because these channels are only about seven feet long, you will have to have a seam in here somewhere. That can be a little bit tricky uh, because obviously you don't, don't want to use JST connectors. So you have to basically go ahead and lay your LED strip down. And if you have any joints, go ahead and pre-wire them. So sometimes it takes an extra, extra set of hands. But if you mount the clips, put your LED strips in there, then they simply just snap into those clips and they will be held in place. The other thing I mentioned is the fact that uh, we're powering our motion detectors by the 5 volt USB and use that flat cable because it was actually possible to take a little double sided tape. I can get an angle down here. We actually mounted that power cable up underneath the aluminum channel. So you really don't see the cable at all. It runs up here to power supply that. But our main power supply and our AC power all at the bottom of the stairs. And by running this extended USB cable to the top, we really don't have any exposed wiring except at the very, at the very top here where it comes out and plugs in. You'll also notice, uh, unlike the one I showed you, I actually added some fins to the top of this. This helped prevent motion detection from firing as someone was coming up the stairs and actually turning off the lights. And if we go down here and take a look at the bottom, you'll see that this one also has fins added. But these fins are added in a different direction. So uh, it was a pretty easy modification just to add those fins. It did take a little bit of trial and error to get that working. But it does help uh, stop 
protection, for example, if someone just walks past the bottom of the stairs so that the lights don't, don't get set off. The other wiring is for the LED strips themselves, the signal wire and the five volts. In my case, those are coming off the power supply, which is mounted on the side of the stairs. But what we want is we want a single signal to both sides of the stairs so that they always stay in sync. So we're going to send a single signal from our, WS, or from our WLED controller simultaneously to both sides of the strips. That means we have to get power and the data signal across to the other side of the stairs. What I ended up doing was running this underneath a little bit of overhang on the bottom riser and used some Velcro uh, cord tender basically to, to tuck that cord up underneath there. Now I will admit it is a little bit ugly but in all honesty as you approach the stairs from standing height you really don't notice it. But you can see the wires coming around the corner tucked in and running up to our LED strip on one side and similarly on the other side. Again, my goal here it might not be the neatest, but again, it was uh, targeting not doing any modifications to the existing stairs whatsoever. So that's it for the parts in the install. It's pretty straightforward, pretty easy, but of course the last piece of this is the software and automations that make it all work. Now I'm not going to go into a lot of detail here because I do cover most of this in, in other videos, but, but briefly, uh, our two motion detectors are going to use ESP Home, and I cover uh, the installation or the use of ESP Home to create new nodes in my video on uh, my mailbox notifications, so you can take a look at that there. But really all we're going to do is we're just going to create a simple binary sensor uh, within ESP Home, one for the stair motion on the top, and obviously the other one for the stair motion on the bottom. And that's all we need to do for those D1 minis that are connected to the, the uh, motion detectors. And then, of course, there's the automation that we need to create in the Home Assistant for uh, the lights themselves to turn off and on based on that motion. Okay, I won't go into a lot of detail here. I will post a, a link down in the video description to my blog and the gist where you can see this uh, entire automation. But really, it just turns the lights on based on motion, turns the lights off, and sets a timer. Uh, it's really pretty straightforward. Again, I'm a YAML guy. This could all be done through the uh, Home Assistant UI now, and you create these uh, automations through that, as opposed to writing the YAML. But again, I'll leave a link to this down in the video description um, you know, if you're interested in seeing more about it. So that's gonna do it for this video. Uh, again, uh, it was really a, a pretty easy project, maybe a, a day's worth of work. Um, most of the expense was really in the aluminum channel and, and the uh, LED strips themselves. So I really haven't totaled it up, but maybe a $150 project. But um, it is probably one of the ones that's the biggest wow factor when when friends and family come over. I don't know why, but for some reason the the, uh, the lights on the stairs really seems to to wow other people. So let me know down in the comments if you have any questions or any thoughts on this. Um, if uh, you found this video useful, go ahead and, and smash that like button. And if you want to see more videos like this, please hit that subscribe and the bell icon if you want to be notified when I release more videos. As always, thanks for watching. Hope to see you soon.